and welcome to the Super Size Fizz Ed Podcast. My name is Dave, and I want to talk about the great PE shoe debate today. Yes, it is a big debate, and we're going to talk about it right after this. Here we go. So on Facebook and all over social media, people erupt, things erupt over a lot of different topics, politics, celebrities, sports, and yes, shoes for PE students, not just clothes, but shoes. So it's been a heated debate. I've seen it. People are on one side of the camp or another. You know, if you don't have sneakers on, you can't play. You are sitting out for the rest of the day. You are in trouble. Your grade suffers. And then there's the anything goes camp where it's just let them go. They're in Crocs or in sandals, whatever. They can run in Crocs. They can do whatever they want. Well, I think there's more than one camp. And I've, I've really thought about this. So let's define the, the, the camps. So again, we have number one, the sneakers only camp. And anything else is forbidden. Anything else, you are in trouble. You are punished. You cannot do anything. You have to sit out. Your grade suffers. You suffer humiliation in front of your friends and your family gets a nasty letter. Maybe not nasty, but a note. That's okay if you call home or or give a note. That's fine. But it's very much on the parents to make sure that their students, their kids have the right shoes on at all times. And I'm coming from a kindergarten through fifth grade perspective. So I want to look at that through this kind of lens. I'm looking at some of you are looking at through high school lens or middle school. So that may be a tiny bit different for you. Camp two, boots, sneakers, closed-toed shoes, uh, the things I call slippers that the girls wear. Um, you know, that's kind of okay. You know, they can they can work in it. They can do some stuff. And then camp three is anything goes. Crocs, sandals, like I said, boots, um, you know, just anything. What Come as you are, you're good. So... When I thought about this, and I again, I, I haven't really responded to any of this. I've just been looking at it and seeing what people have been saying. And some people get really heated. I've seen things like, never Crocs. And I've seen things like, well, my fastest student wore Crocs and did ran a mile and everything's fine. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of in that, I want to say, 1.5 camp. Not, not the, somewhere in between the sneakers only and the, the boots, sneakers, closed-toed shoes. And I'll tell you why. And you could bait me on this if you'd like. So, you know, obviously sneakers are good. And I tell the students, you know, they have PE almost every day. They have PE about three times a week. Um, they have recess every day. Sometimes it's inside, but mostly it's outside. And, you know, we are outside. Now, some of you are inside, have inside uh, gyms, gymnasiums, things like that. But we're outside. We're on cement, concrete, uh, we're, we, yes, we are in the field um, sometimes, but it just depends. So to me, obviously sneakers are great. Boots, well, it depends what kind of boots. Sometimes there's boots like cowboy boots. boots. Sometimes it's more like winter boots. Um, and then I see kind of like worker boots on uh, boys and girls. And like I said, those kind of slipper looking things on girls. To me... Those are okay. They're not great. And sometimes, you know, mommy, daddy, grandma, grandpa, whoever says, hey, my little cute little kindergartner, it's cold outside. Let's wear winter boots. And you can't fault the kids for that. That's not their fault. Okay. But we want to err on the side of caution as as PE teachers. At least I do. And I hope you do as well. So there are times when kids come in Crocs with Crocs on. Not a lot. Or especially sandals. I've seen a kindergartner come in a couple times and I mean, open toed shoes, you know, I, that's to me is, is a little dangerous and it depends on the game, depends on what we're doing, but I, you know, I want to give them something to do though. Okay. Here's what I don't do. I don't punish or have them sit out. That's not usually even their fault. I'd say maybe fourth and fifth grade, they, they know a little better, but especially the younger kids, they don't, you know, they, they. They get dressed by somebody at home usually, and, you know, sometimes they don't have the right shoes or, you know, I've heard that, you know, they live with different, uh, maybe the family is split as far as, you know, their parents. So, you know, maybe they left their sneakers at 
mom's house over the weekend, something like that. You know, we need to be, um, you know, we need to be good listeners. We need to be empathetic towards their needs. Okay. I mean, what I do, if it's something that they can participate in, I let them participate. That's, that's the ba- basic, that's the bottom line. If they can do it, I let them do it. Now, there is a little however as- a- after it. There's an asterisk after it. It depends on the game. So if we're playing something like, well, I have the rail yard obstacle course and some of the surfaces, if, if I have it on the angled side or the uh, not the flat side, you know, it could be a little slippery. So if they're wearing like cowboy boots or winter boots, I let them go on the flat part, but I don't allow them on the other part because it's to me, it's it's just too dangerous. Um, so I, I modify that. If they're playing tag in the field in like, you know, sandals, I, I don't allow that. However, back to the however, I will give them an alternate thing to do. Cup stacking, uh, dribbling a ball. If it's it, maybe not the sandals, but dribbling a ball, the scoops, they can play catch with, by themselves or with a friend. OK, so modify the games, keep them active, but don't let them be uh, playing a dangerous game. OK, that that's my take on this. I don't want to make this all super long episode, but, you know, I treat it sometimes the same as a, a few of our injured students. Now, if they're in a, a cast or something, there's very little that they should do and, and ca- can do. You know, however, I've had uh, multiple students in the past couple of days come to me with a like a broken arm or a broken wrist. And I just, you know, when if and when we do a lap at, on the track or something, I said, well, you can go walk. And one student didn't want to do anything. He just wanted to sit there and, and kind of mope um, with his broken arm. And I said, you know, it's OK. I don't want you to run. I don't want you to do anything to get hurt. I don't want you playing these games. However, you can walk a lap with your friends and come back and I'll give you an alternate activity. So to me, that's very similar to the uh, maybe the improper shoe debate where you can do something. It's just not something uh, that's going to get you hurt or it's going to get other people hurt. So another thing is, yes, send note. I've, I've done this before. Send notes home if there's a problem, if there's a continuous problem. Um, talk to the teacher and maybe they could send a note home in their planner or whatever they have, especially the little uh, kindergarten to whatever second grade. However, don't punish or change their grade. And I'm guilty of that maybe in the past when I was 10 years ago, my first year or whatever, teaching PE. There were times when the same student came to class with, um, I'm not even saying Crocs, I'm trying to think what, but it was just the improper shoes. And I sent notes home, I believe I talked to the parents and they're just like, well, you know, we'll do what we can. And um, I believe I gave them, you know, an, an, an MPE or something because of that. Please don't do that. That's not uh, that's not proper. That's not correct. That's not usually the student's fault. And sometimes it's, it's a financial thing. It could be. You don't know. So please don't punish. That's the main thing. Do not punish. Find an alternate activity and go from there. So now it is time for your cowbell tip of the day. Okay, so your tip of the day is take a deep breath. (sighs) Take a deep look at your program and judge for yourself. I'm going to ask you three questions to think about for yourself. Is it fair to do what you're doing to these students um, that do not come in with the proper shoes? Okay, is it dangerous? Like, is there a dangerous game? Yes. Um, If there's a dangerous game, I suggest you don't let them play the dangerous game. However, number three is, can it be modified? Can you modify the game? Give them an alternate activity, an alternate thing to do. They can maybe even read a brief biography on a sports figure and uh, report on it. I I believe there's something you can do. The bottom line is do not punish by grades or by uh, have them sit out, embarrassed, hurt, um, you know, usually not even their faults or maybe not their faults. Maybe they forgot it was PE that day. I've had that before. Look, take a look at your program and see how you are treating your students, because that's what's most important. Yeah, yes, you want to keep them safe. Of course, I want to keep my students safe, but I want to be fair to them and to their needs and to their family's needs. And that is your cowbell tip of the day.
Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. As always, go to supersizephysad.com for more information or to reach out to me. My email is in there. It's even in the episode notes. So I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, week, weekend, whenever you're listening to this night at the gym, wherever, whenever. If you're going for a walk, I like to listen to podcasts on my walk as well or jog or whatever. You're amazing, PE Nation. Let's keep pushing our profession forward.